arguably one of the players who might actually have the biggest impact on the Canadians post trade deadline as someone not acquired through trade, but actually Cole Caulfield coming in fresh off his Holby Baker win. When do you anticipate us seeing him making his Montreal Canadiens debut? I thought it would have happened already. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there is a, I think there is a mental, I think there's a couple of things at play here. The one is that you've got a veteran laden group uh, up front in Montreal now. Um, you look up and down the lineup. Yeah, they're they're young up the middle when it comes to Suzuki and Cockenhamie and Evans. Everyone else is a vet, mm-hmm. and um, I don't. I, mean, I think there might be some concern about the message you send when there's already some really good players that are sitting out on a nightly basis that you're bringing a kid in and giving him that shot. But I think also, you know, there's a willingness to to get a bit of development in at the pro level, let him get his feet wet, let him ride the buses and have that experience a little bit before he's given the world um, or brought into a situation where people are looking at him as the answer. Mm -hmm. Uh, But inevitably, you know, Mark Bergman likes to say the players make the decisions for you. This kid is going to make the decision pretty hard to keep him in Laval for much longer. Um, And it's not, I don't, you know, he could have scored zero goals in his first two games. I don't think it would have changed a damn thing about what I think about him. I, I, I know this. I, I've watched this kid for three years. I watched a ton of his games at Wisconsin. I watched him at the World Juniors with a much more objective lens than a lot of people who are like, why isn't he scoring 15 points a game? You know, I, I didn't really give a shit about that. Uh, I, was, I was watching to see what he looked like away from the puck. I, 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 he, he, he taught me some things in that tournament, even though he didn't produce at the level that people wanted to see. And sure enough, they won a gold medal. And then he went on and had a a Hobie Baker winning year at Wisconsin with his head coach saying he played one of the best seasons uh, ever in college hockey history. And he's right. Uh, You know, 30 goals, 52 points and 31 games is ridiculous. And there's not a lot of people that score that much at the college level. Like, I don't, I think, if I'm not mistaken, there wasn't a pair of teammates that scored that much this year at the college level. Would we be having a conversation about Cole Caulfield being in Montreal immediately if he was six feet? I, it's something I'm, I wonder about. Yeah. Um, my opinion of this kid, whenever he gets his shot, whenever he does play a full season, his first year he'll score a minimum of 24 goals. And it's it's not because... He's, a, he's just a sniper and a, and a shooter. There is so much more to his game. He's an elite talent. He thinks the game on an elite level. Um, people are worried that he's going to get blown up. There have been players at his size that you don't see it happen very often. And, you know, when it does, they get back up and dust themselves off like every other hockey player out there. It, it, is it going to be tough to win some board battles? Yeah. Is it going to be tough at times for him um, on the defensive side? no more than any other player his age coming in, but he is a, a special talent and a guy that has one of the best. I, I would, I would say without hesitation, no matter what people think. And if they think I'm ridiculous for saying it, I don't think 5% of NHLers shoot the way he does right now. Wow. And he's never played an NHL game, but that it's, it's not just the shot. It, it's, uh, I think one of the things that he does best outside of his creativity in the off- offensive zone and, the, and his brilliance there is his motion away from the puck and reading transition. He is constantly putting himself in a position to perfectly read when transition is going to happen and be in a spot to receive the puck at speed and go with it and be able to get to that best asset that he has, which is his shot, his rush game, his, his um, creativity in the offensive zone, his ability to swing in motion in the neutral zone and read when the puck is going to get turned over or his ability from a defensive posture to read when the play is getting forced into a defensive situation that it's going to get turned over and go the other way. And the way he starts moving before all that happens, he's, he's a step ahead. And there's very few players that I've seen with that specific skill set. One guy, because there's no, there's nothing else to compare about their game, so don't take this the wrong way. A guy who does that specifically well and has done that his entire career is Evgeny Malkin. Watch Evgeny Malkin when the puck is not near him, when the puck is just about to be turned over to his defense and he's swinging back to the neutral zone. 
he knows exactly when to step on it, when to get into a spot that before they've turned the puck over, he knows when the defensive is going to defenseman's going to get the puck and he's put himself in a spot that it's an easy out for the defenseman. These are little, very little details that are hard. I just use a thousand words to explain it. It's a hard thing to explain, but if you watch Cole Caulfield, that's something he has. And that's something that is going to translate at the NHL level outside of all the other assets that we know he has. And it's players that are that good away from the puck are players that can play in this league and good. He'll play in Laval and he'll, he'll get his cookies and he'll do well and people will continue and the hype will grow. He's also not a guy that's going to shy away from the hype or the expectations or he's proved that already. Um, I know, I know people are, there's people in Montreal that made me really laugh about this in the last like week. You know, I wrote a column saying like, you need this kid. Like now you've scored seven goals in five games, four goals in the last three. You just went through a three game losing streak. You, you had a game against Winnipeg where you lost five, nothing, but in the first 10 minutes, they had three chances from inside the crease and two guys shot the puck wide. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like, you need him now. And for the people who are like, oh, don't rush him and you're going to ruin him. And it, like, whoa, like, what are you talking about? Like, you play him for five games. If, if he's not ready, he'll show you he's not ready and you'll send him down and there's no harm, no foul. Everyone will be fine, including Cole Caulfield. So I think we'll see him soon to give you another extremely long answer to a very simple question you asked. Well, knowing what you do about how Montreal manages its assets and even Ducharme's sort of inclination of how he deploys people on a nightly basis, minutes wise, do you think when he does make his debut, he's going to be sort of eased into that like fourth line, eight minutes role, or is he going to be top six forwards right from the get go? I mean, there's a couple ways to do it. You know, if you're, if you're concerned and you want to shelter him, you can put him on a line with Eric Stahl and Corey Perry. Mm-hmm. Or you could put him on a line while Gallagher's out right now with, with Philip Deneau and Thomas Tatar. Uh, although I think that would be a little bit more complicated because then he'd have to play against top players for, for most of his shifts, and that might be asking a bit much. But why not, if, if you're worried about it, and if you want to shelter him, put him on a line with Stahl and with Perry and jump him into the first power play unit and use him that way. You know, you'll play him roughly 10 minutes at five on five and give him another two or three special teams. That's a good way to bring him in. Uh, you could also, for half the game, play him on a line with Nick Suzuki and Jonathan Drouet, uh, or you can play him on a line with Jesperi Kokniemi and Tyler Toffoli. There's a million options that you can go with that if the game gets tight, uh, you can change that and put a more defensively structured or experienced player up in that spot. You know, there's no bad way to play this. I think the fact is the Canadians are healthy. They have a veteran group and they don't want to rock the boat too much with a player that they know is a threat to some of their others. But at the end of the day, this is about winning and, you know, less so, you know, the regular season implication is one thing, but the Canadians want to make the playoffs and they want to go all the way. And they believe that they have a team that can do that despite what some other people in Canada or even the United States might think their chances would be against Tampa or Colorado or Vegas or Toronto even. Um, When they get there, you better put the guys in who can give you the best chance to win. And for me, before we get there, if I'm them, I want to see what that kid can do. Uh, And I believe I, 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 they'll, they'll make their own decisions but I believe that if you give that kid a chance, he's going to take it. Yeah. So all that to say is you haven't spent much time thinking about Cole Caulfield whatsoever. Then. Well, I wrote a whole column about it, but I also, you know, it's, it's three years I've been watching him uh, and, and watching him a lot closer than some people. And I speak to a lot of people that are not only involved with him, but watching him with completely objective lenses that work for other teams and, they see what I see. And I think the Canadians see it too. I think they know exactly what he is and what he's going to be. Um, but we'll find out soon. Cause I believe he'll be in Montreal to get a, at least a look. You want to know what you have before you get to the dance. Right. 